a lot of things define a good bartender. I think it's about mentality at the end. You get a lot of pressure on top of you. It takes a special kind of ability to put the pressure inside. I think that you need uh, tolerance. Coming from Slovenia, from a little town of uh, Gunzle, close to Ljubljana. Bartending in Greece, in London, and now in Slovenia, professionally and sometimes for friends as well. I was working in hospitality in Slovenia for a um, couple of years. In Slovenia, everybody works in hospitality while they're studying just to get some money, and I did the same. I had a quite big accident uh, with a car in uh, August, like four years ago. Till then, I went from one university to another university and didn't really know what I want to do. I saw some videos of bartenders and stuff, and I signed for a class in Ljubljana. Got very excited uh, from two bartenders who were very passionate about it. They introduced me that uh, job as a passion, as a lifestyle, as something that you can actually live around all your life. So basically, yeah. After that, I decided if I want to be really good, probably I need to go abroad. So I found this uh, school in Greece and uh, I moved there for like two months. It was a good experience. I met a very good friend, Yanis from Greece. Uh, we went on a dinner and we were like, okay, uh, what should we do? Like, um, I want to go to London, I want to go to London. And then we went to London. We didn't have a job. Uh, we basically never worked really in a cocktail bar or anything, but we wanted to be bartenders. I'm from Venezuela. I discovered hospitality by accident, like at the age of 18. One of my friends, they had this uh, nightclub in the beach and they asked me for help. So I started helping them, like it became something regularly. And I fell in love with the art of mixing drinks and serving people in, in a way. Eventually I ended up working in the, in the capital, is Caracas. I work in a really nice cocktail bar when I learned like the, the basics. Three years after, I formed a company with my partners that work with me in this bar. So we kind of like uh, broke grounds in this uh, in this country. We were doing like a catering kind of style, but like bringing uh, cocktails to people's houses. Five years later, I was uh, teaching in an academy. I was uh, a brand ambassador for the Venezuelan Roms, and I was traveling the world. Uh, I went to London for the first time in my life. I uh, went to so many bars. I remember that they pay me quite a substantial amount, and I spent all my money going to bars and investigating and seeing what was going on. When I came back to Venezuela at that time, I decided that I was going to move to London. London was big when I first arrived. You, know, you think of oh, one month and I should know a bit around, uh, it's, it's two months and you still are like, oh my God, I'm like an alien. It's ever changing city, so I mean, you get used to that. It's always different. <laughs> I basically got a job in three days. I got a position as a bartender. It was an American barbecue restaurant. Um, climbed myself to a bar manager in half a year. Slowly wanted to go to a proper cocktail bar because we had cocktail menu and everything, but it's different being a restaurant, being a really cocktail bar. So after that, I went back to bartending position just to work in a very, very good uh, cocktail bar. And then I left that bar as well for going to a hotel bar. So I saw a bit of a creative part of cocktail bars and then I saw the luxury bars in the hotel side as well. My first job was uh, in a five-star hotel. I learned about the standards and what the standards mean and how important it is to keep the standards up and, and to provide good service and genuine service. After that, uh, the net opened. I just went there. I was the last bartender to join the team. So far in my 13 years of career, I've never worked with an amazing team as I work in the vault. It was the best team I ever had in my life. I think you learn quickly in London. The customers, they have a lot of expectations and they do have a lot of requirements, so it makes you go the extra mile or learn faster. And every bar is like a really busy bar, so you kind of like need to think fast and work fast and, and solve problems as they come. Usually they really appreciate the people who are working hard and uh, try to be better every day and stuff like that. So 
this is something that maybe sometimes I miss in Slovenia, that people are working hard, but they don't get a reward for five, six years, and they are still on the same position. Drinking culture, it's uh, very different, maybe more because of the size of London and of the strategic position in the modern world when everybody from the whole world is kind of saturating in London and you have so many differences and you cannot really compare it. You know, Ljubljana is such a small city, though it has their, its diversity, but comparing to London, not really. So Slovenian drinking culture, for now, it's mostly still based on the, that alcohol is something that you need to drink to get basically drunk. We have nice uh, attitude that we want to drink in company and everything and socialize, that's very good. Maybe we should think about changing this to actually enjoy the drink as well, not just have it because it contains alcohol, you know, have it actually for the flavor. I'm not saying that in England and in London they don't, because you still have a lot of people who like, just want to get uh, drunk. Because of the amount of people, you get quite a nice market of people who really want to explore the flavors of whiskeys, of uh, jeans, of cocktails, of wine. So with this bigger amount of people, you have a lot more, um, I would say, like a playground, you know, like uh, people come to your bar and they ask you about this and they ask you about that, you know, so you can have something to talk about. Let's say in Slovenia, the food is quite developed. People really like to go out and try these flavors and these flavors. We need more uh, good cocktail bars, uh, I think, wine bars, uh, beer bars to educate people. Because when you educate people, then they will know. So it's going to be easier for us eventually too. My country is quite far, it's like going to Cuba, it's like going back in time. So you go there and you have a limited amount of spirits, mostly rum because that's what they produce. Uh, you have beer, it's an amazing beer. And you have uh, these distilleries, they are producing the rum, they're also doing uh, another spirits because they need to fill this gap in the market. But it's not like you can get liquors and vermouth and there is no culture at all. So when I came here, I kind of like discovered what it really means to be a, a bartender. When I, when I came to London, you know, and Europe in general, they have a particular thing to fill up any gap, like an aperitivo time, like a digestivo, like a, we don't have this. We, we just drink uh, from uh, the beginning to an end with no point or no reason. 50 years ago in Slovenia you knew two beers, you knew red and green. And then all of a sudden came a bit of a beer revolution and now people love drinking craft beers and all these different styles of beer. Beer culture changed a lot in just five years. And even wine, we become recognized worldwide. So I believe that cocktail culture as well can start developing in a similar way. You just need the right people in the right positions and show people that they can enjoy a bar and they will come again. The cocktail making mostly started, at least the modern style started more or less in USA, so they are still strong, though maybe they, they had a small fall, but New York is still one of the major cocktail cities. And in USA as well, let's say San Francisco and New Orleans are one of the very, very important cities in cocktail culture. If you go to Asia, there is a big development. Probably Asia is uh, on the way to be leading drinking culture in the world. Singapore and Japan with Tokyo, Hong Kong, all these cities are thriving in a cocktail and drinking world. All around hospitality, just uh, having a big boom, you know, like everybody's trying to do something different, this and this, and it's just getting more and more interesting. You know? And then Australia as well, it's very, very interesting with Melbourne and Sydney being very, very strong cities. Uh, if you look this year again, top 10 bars in the world in let's say 50 Bears Bar uh, Awards, you're gonna find like around four bars from London in that top 10. So that already tells you that London is one of the leading cities. In Europe, apart London, Berlin for sure is becoming very, very cool. Uh, Barcelona, Europe has um, some cool, and Paris for sure as well. So. A lot of things define a good bartender. For sure one is to actually make good drinks, but then to make good drinks, because in a night you maybe have to do 200 and everyone needs to taste the same. Make one drink, it's quite easy, but to make 200 the same, that's a bigger challenge. Being uh, fashionable, looking uh, presentable every day, uh, being uh, sociable, uh, that's one of the most important parts for sure. How to interact with people, because this is the hardest, you know. You can teach somebody good skills, you can teach uh, somebody recipes, 
is how to speak to people and to not throw you out of your game, you know, because people will put you close to your limit many times, you know, like uh, with their behavior. That's how it is, you know, in a good way and in a bad way. That's very hard to control. So I think that's the hardest thing, uh, to have this mentality that doesn't matter if the guy is maybe a bit rude to you, maybe it's not exactly behaving like your perfect world looks like, but you still put a facade on and you just go through and you focus on the one after that it's going to be an amazing uh, guest. I think that you need uh, tolerance. Uh, this job is, you get a lot of pressure on top of you and uh, sometimes you can reflect that to the guest, so I think that it takes practice and it takes a, a special kind of ability to put the pressure inside and just show your, your, your best. You, know? you need to have a good knowledge. I think that you really need to go and read a book or two or a whole library. I think you need to keep updated to things what, what are they going on, what, what is happening. So you need to read magazines, you need to meet and know names from the industry. And I also think that you, you need to have some values from your house, obviously. I think that you need to try to push to keep the standards up because it's, it's really easy to just go lazy and say, no, not this time, you know? So it, it kind of takes discipline to keep the, the train going. I think it's about mentality at the end. You need to learn all the classic octaves. You need to learn the skills and everything. But when they come at 2.30 and you're closing in five minutes, you're completely out of energy already. You're closing, you'll still go behind to pick up something just to make an extra effort for that guest, you know? It doesn't matter if you're in a good mood, if you're in a bad mood, you are not really allowed to have bad days, you know? like. I think that's the hardest thing. I mean, I love uh, drinks, I love uh, making them, I love the adrenaline as well. I think, yeah, this with people, this is the most interesting part because it's always different, you know. 200 people and everybody wants drinks and you're like flying and it's cool, it's a good feeling. But um, this with people, everybody's different. Just getting to know them, you know, I mean, their stories, you know, you meet so many different people that uh, from a whole world. So I think that's the, that's the most interesting part of uh, this job, I think. So far, I feel like I'm kind of like an entrepreneur, so I still want to travel a lot. And uh, I think the bartender is a really good career for people who want to meet the world. Like you go there, you speak English, you get a job and you, meet the, this new place. There are communities, I think even like an unofficial community of bartenders. What I see here, it's something really beautiful, like people are always open. Whichever bartender I met, you ask him about this, about the recipes, nobody's hiding, they want to tell you. Very open-minded. I saw some professions when they are hiding there, you know, what they're doing and stuff. You meet your fellow bartenders, you know, like I meet these guys who are just visiting me in Slovenia. They come to visit you, you come to visit them, they show you their country, you show them yours. In London there is a lot of these groups how to find jobs you know like you have a London bartending uh, this on Facebook and then you find and people post, posting inside the job offers and stuff and that's how I found uh, my daily jobs you know like I went there and I was like okay somebody's paying that amount because they need an extra stuff for tonight and you go there and you work uh, for a night so that helps. I think sweet and bitter is in Slovenia quite predominant what I saw. In England, it's so diverse. Whoever is not too educated about drinking will like sweet, because this is the first taste that you are kind of uh, adapted to and you really like it. But getting older, it's going to be more bitter. So I love bitter now, and body first rejects it. But when you accept it, it's more addictive than sweet. I think you have, you have different people within our profession that they're looking for different things. I think that you can get the people who doesn't take it seriously and he's never gonna go anywhere. He's gonna stay in the same pub working for 20 years, uh, earning minimum wage. And you have people who is gonna pursue. And, and I think that given enough time, these people are gonna uh, achieve uh, success in some way or another. Eventually, I think that if you take it seriously and you have just a tiny touch of luck, you can uh, achieve greatness in this industry. I don't want to, people to leave Slovenia, but I think it's good to go for at least a while and uh, open your mind a bit and see what others do and just take a bit from everything and always just listen and listen and listen. Even if you don't agree, still listen, you know, because maybe if you don't agree with something, there might be a small part of that uh, sentence that you still can agree with, so you can still learn uh, something that's going to help you in the future. For younger bartenders, they learn 
learn, learn, learn. And the more knowledge you have, more power you have. So I did schools, they are good. I can say it helped me a bit. But on the other hand, I learned so much more when I was actually working in cocktail bars because you'll have your experienced people behind you and uh, if they are proper bartenders, they will always offer you help and then you can ask questions and uh, you will actually start communicating with people. Like I said, and that's the hardest part. So uh, yeah, that's my advice, yeah. Prepare yourself, like read, like practice, like uh, you put yourself in front of a mirror and uh, practice your technique and uh, it will make the difference. I think that you need to be acceptive of other people's culture. It's gonna make you be easy going with the people who's coming to your bar. You're gonna be more open-minded and you're gonna treat everyone like better. Life in Slovenia is beautiful. I suggest to go and see. Come back and bring the knowledge that you got outside and uh, let's make Slovenia better every day. Then.